So good morning, everyone. Uh, first and forth. First and foremost, I want to thank all the frontline uh, essential workers that are out there every day doing their job, keeping us safe. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, we had an Albany County resident pass away last night. A woman in her 70s who lived at our Shaker Place nursing home, our county nursing home, that brings our total up to 14. But uh, I want to say to the family, my condolences and prayers go out to you. Uh, it's tough, and I've said this, and I hate saying this, and I wish I didn't have to say this, it's a tough time to lose somebody, uh, especially if they're in a nursing home because you can't see them. And you can't, uh, you know, you can't physically touch them and, and, and say goodbye and, uh, the way you want to. So please, everyone out there, pray for these families, all 70 of them, uh, you know, and our latest ones yesterday. Um, again, to the family, uh, my condolences and prayers go out to you. We're here for you if you need us. Uh, it's a difficult time for anyone to deal with it. I also want to thank our first responders. Um, it's National EMS Week, and thank you to all emergency workers for what you do every day, day in and day out. Um, we do appreciate you keeping us safe and responding to areas of the county that no one else can get to, to give them the same opportunity as anyone else. So uh, thank you for what you do. Uh, can't thank you enough. As of today, we have 1,481 positive cases, which brings us up to three positive from yesterday, which is good. We have 764 people under mandatory quarantine. That's down by 63 from yesterday, which is also good. We have five people under precautionary quarantine. That's down one from yesterday. At our Shaker Place, as we continue to test all staff per, uh, twice a week per the executive order, 32 residents who had tested positive have recovered, and we tested all 190 staff about a couple of days ago, we, um, but we've been aggressively testing our residents and staff for, for the last three to four weeks. So, uh, and it takes time to do it, but uh, we're there, and uh, these are great things moving forward. Uh, there's 3,906 people that have completed quarantine, up 21 from yesterday. And out of that, 1,013 tested positive for the virus and have recovered. That's up 18 from yesterday, which is also good. There are now 30 people hospitalized with a hospitalization rate of 2.02%. That's up slightly yesterday from yesterday at 1.96. We have currently have three people in our ICU, and that's down two from yesterday. Over the last five days, the average is, uh, comes to about 16.6 .6 new positive cases each day. Uh, yesterday, it was up to 18.4, so it's down a little bit. As we continue to uh, do our mobile testing, as we continue to do Rite Aid and Priority One, uh, UAlbany for essential workers and uh, people in general, uh, we've been very aggressive here in the capital region with Schenectady uh, County, Tony Jachinski, and uh, Steve McLaughlin over in Rensselaer. We've been all pretty aggressive getting testing. And to, like I said, to see the numbers go down is good. It tells me a couple of things. People are listening to Dr. Whalen. Uh, they're getting her message loud and clear from the health department. And what we're saying, stay home, isolate, keep six feet apart, cough into your arm, um, and do the right thing. You know, uh, so I do want to thank everyone that's doing the right thing out there in the community and, uh, you know, continue to do that. Hopefully we get the green light today or tomorrow to get into phase one. Uh, again, it doesn't mean that the floodgates open up and everyone can just start strolling around. Uh, masks, these are, these are going to be the norm, people. This is going to be the norm right here going forward for quite a while. Um, but again, uh, I just want to say to everyone, please uh, continue to do what's right. Um, it's tough on everyone, including teens, uh, teenagers who want, want to be with their friends, playing sports, just hanging out. Uh, I, I, I know some of the people that I uh, took some feedback, they think I'm picking on the 20 to 29 year olds. Listen, I have two kids. I have a 24 year old, soon to be 25, and I have a 23 year old um, at home. You know, my son's home from Boston. I said this earlier because his office was shut down. So that's the good part of this, that he's home with me again for a while till they open up. Um, and that's that age group. And I tell them the same thing, you know, and I had some of it, you know, say, Hey dad, some of my friends are going to Lake George this weekend. I'm going to go. I go, the hell you are. You're not going. Have you been listening to me every day? You know? And again, you get to the point where you get, they get over it and they're like, well, it's not affecting me. I want to get out. I want to see my friends. Um, I'm like, yeah, no, you're not. Um, but I, again, I'm not, 
trying to pick on the age group. I'm just saying that they have a different mindset than most of anyone else. And if you remember being in that age group, you uh, think you're invincible and they're not showing signs and symptoms and they're, and they're getting out there. And that's all we're just trying to remind you of. Go out, wear your mask, social distance, and do the right thing and clean your hands. But today, I'm uh, very excited to announce our partnership with AT&T, OmniPal, uh, and, and Albany Native, NFL running back from New, New York Giants, Deion Lewis, who's with us today. Uh, as we all know, he started his career in Albany, uh, Albany Pop Warner, and then he went to Boys Academy, and then he went to the prep school. And uh, Deion's been a fabric of our community and uh, has done not just well for himself, but he continues to be a partner in the community coming back every time we call on him and uh, giving back uh, to the kids and giving back to the community. And I can't thank Dion enough, uh, but we're challenging kids and we're, we're gonna launch a challenge that's going to make teens from the age of 13 to 18 uh, every week to post a video. And we're gonna do a di different theme every week, but post a video uh, on Instagram. Um, and our hashtag is gonna be hashtag Albany County, stay safe. And we're gonna ask the kids to put a video together of uh, in this week, it's going to be move it. How you can exercise um, safely and how you can continue to do stuff safely, uh, how you're dealing with being at home. And the good thing about this partnership that we have with PAL and AT&T uh, and everyone else that's here, and I'm going to be mentioning everyone, is uh, we're going to be giving out gift cards every week through AT&T and with this challenge to the videos that win. So, uh, but First, our, our great football star from the Capital Region and pal kid, Deion Lewis, is uh, going to show us how he's staying active when gyms are closed and we, how he stays in shape moving forward and how he's getting ready to come back to New York. I know, Dion, you're still not here back in New York, and we wish you were, uh, but we can't wait to see you back here, and hopefully our governor gets the uh, sports up and running here in New York and we can uh, come watch you be one of our New York Giants. So, uh, But I also want to thank... Uh, uh, everyone else that's helping make this possible. That's PAL and AT&T. But uh, Dion, can you hear us? Yes, sir. Take over. It's all on you right now. The pressure's on. Um, I just wanted to start off by saying I hope everybody's you know, taking this seriously and really um, taking the proper steps to stay, stay safe and keep your family safe. I mean, it's very uncertain times and you can't do things like you may want to do. So, um, and it's tough, but you know, I just think that it's important to try to follow the rules as best as you can. And then if everybody does that, the thing will be done quickly. So um, I just want to urge kids to, you know, just try to stay inside as much as they can, but still stay active. You can't just watch TV and play video games and eat candy all day. So um, still try to get out there and run. You know, some things I do, I can't go in the gym right now because they're closed. They're closed. So, you know, I just kind of go back to what I was doing when I was younger before I started really lifting heavy weights and things like that. So. So just a lot of running, a lot of push-ups, a lot of sit-ups, you know, even if you are playing a video game, I play the video game still. So even between that, like if I get scored on, if I'm playing a football game, or if I'm losing after a quarter in 2K, I'll just do 50 push-ups real quick, you know, just to stay active and, you know, because it's tough not being in the weight room, um, trying to keep my weight up and things like that. So, you know, it's just got to try to do other things to stay in shape and make sure I'm keeping my mind right as well, because, you know, I like to go outside too, but, you know, it's best that everybody stay where they are and stay away from people. So um, I just try to do that as best I can. You know, I'll go out, go for jobs all the time by myself, um, go in the backyard and just, I have a ladder drill and some, some dumbbells, but you know, I don't have much at my place. So, you know, just try to do whatever I can. And just knowing that in the long run, what I'm doing is gonna help everybody else. Dan, I appreciate that. And I, I know there's gonna be questions for you. And thank you as always partnering with us here in Albany County. Uh, and always giving back to the community. I can't thank you enough for that. And being, you know, uh, being a true inspiration to kids to look up to. And uh, I thank you. I thank you for that. Another person that's been a huge uh, person that gives back to our community time and time again, always there with us is uh, Tom Broccoli from uh, PAL. He's filling in from Lenny, who had surgery and couldn't be here today. But uh, Tom, please. Back to New York too. I mean, I would have loved to be 
We don't have time for sailors. <laughs> it's about giants. Exactly. So Leah, uh, Leah uh, is uh, with us, although it's uh, Christmas from AT&T. But we're looking forward to the hashtag Albany County Stay Safe program that we're going to be embarking on this week. And together with our partners and many other like-minded community organizers, it's our Stay Safe Social Distancing Challenge that we do. Monday, when they drive down, that you're going to hear what the challenge is. And during the week, I think it's a midnight on the Saturday of that week. If you want to submit your, your hashtag, uh, Albany County Stay Safe, a video. We're looking forward to seeing the photos, the poems, and TikTok clips uh, while challenging your friends and family and neighbors to socially distance safely and exercise. Uh, get out and move around. And this week, obviously, as, as Dan mentioned, it's a movement. So stay healthy and stay strong. And we look forward to rewarding a, a lot of those gift recipients at DNC so can be donated each week with the potential just for participating. You can win some award <laughs> at uh, hashtag Wolverine well, County Stay Safe. So, now let's, uh, let's move it. Tom, thank you. And thank you to Pal, and especially thanks to Dion, but and to ATT for stepping up and doing this. Uh, you know, when we talk about companies, how they're thinking outside the box, how they're giving back in these difficult times. Uh, I can't thank at t enough for this partnership and Kristen Duffy, who is joining us on Zoom. Uh, please tell us about the partnership with at t Good morning. Thank you so much. Uh, on behalf of at t we are thrilled to be partnering with County Executive McCoy and with Pal on this really great public safety and educational um, campaign. First, I, I need to give a shout out to Dion. Dion, you are such a role model to the kids in this community, and um, there's no doubt that your participation will help um, make the initiative really more engaging and meaningful. Um, so we're just extremely grateful that you are joining us in challenging teams. Um, also, I am a huge admirer of County Executive McCoy. Um, you are a true leader. Um, your leadership in throughout this crisis has been um, exceptional and the, the county, the residents are lucky to have you. I can't thank um, the administration enough for all you've done to keep the community safe. Thank you. Um, AT&T has been, <laughs> sure, um, AT&T has been connecting people for more than 100 years um, and it's never been more important than it is now to find new and um, effective ways to communicate meaningfully. Uh, so this initiative is a really great example um, and demonstrates how technology and digital communication, um, like social media, coupled with strong community partnerships can really prove to be a beneficial tool um, in slowing the spread of COVID-19, as well as uh, just a good for the community. We are, you know, excited to be partnering with you all, especially because of the important public safety focus that this initiative has. Um, this commitment is aligns nicely with AT&T's commitment to support first responders as part of our FirstNet um, platform. FirstNet is a communication platform for first responders. It offers um, a reliable, highly secure, um, an innovative wireless broadband network, which has proven to be an invaluable resource to first responders as they're fighting COVID-19. Um, and lastly, I just wanna conclude to the residents of Albany County, um, to the workers on the front line and to the, the first responders, we see you, we know how difficult this has been. Um, we know the, the sacrifices that you're making every single day to keep your community and your neighbors safe. Um, we see you, we're here to support you as best that we can, and um, as we work together to stay and keep people connected, um, we just are hopeful that there are better days soon to come. So thank you. Thank you so much, and to Dion, Kristen, and Tom, and Pal, and at and for the partnership, which it's not possible to do this together, and for bringing this challenge to 13 to 18-year-olds to do a video this Saturday, uh, and I'm saying this to my daughter, Taryn, at home who's 15, who's driving me crazy with the TikTok videos. Here's a challenge from dad, and leave me alone, because it's about you, uh, to do this video and post it before uh, midnight on Saturday. And it's hashtag Omni County, stay safe, and the theme is moving it. So uh, how you can exercise and do it safely. So 
um, before I go on to any other questions, I know we might have questions for uh, Kristen or Dion or Tom or anyone. Does uh, anyone have any questions for them? Oh, hold on. There goes. Questions? Just a quick one for Dion. Um, obviously, yesterday the governor kind of said that he is open to having professional sports begin again, but without the fans. What are your reactions to this? Obviously, I am sure that you would want some New Yorkers and people from the Capital Region making the trek down to Jersey to see you play for the Giants. Um, I think that it would definitely be different than what I've been used to my entire life. I've been playing in front of fans even since I was like 10. So it definitely would be a lot different, but if they think that's what's best for everybody to stay safe and for us to beat this thing, then that's what we got to do. Um, I'm sure it'll be an adjustment for a lot of players, but if it's the right thing to do to keep everybody safe, I'm all for it. Dion, you mentioned uh, essentially striking a balance with diverse interests. You may like to play video games, but there needs to be a balance with that and physical activity and whatever other responsibilities you may have at a time like this. How do you strike that balance between what could be seen as just frivolous fun and what you need to do to keep yourself healthy? How do you make a schedule or a planner? Um, that's a tough part. I mean, um, we just started Zoom meetings for work a few weeks ago, which definitely helped me be more schedule oriented and try to get up early and do my normal routine. But before that, I was just sleeping until whenever I felt like it, eating and then working out. But, you know, I had to start getting back into my mind when we started um, these Zoom meetings for, for football. So that's when I started getting up early, making breakfast, um, watching the news in the morning, then I do my meetings and then I work out. So it just kind of, you got to try to do, make it normal. You can't just, just because you're at home all day, you can't treat it like it's Saturday or Sunday every day. You got to treat it like it's a Monday or Tuesday. You got to do what you got to do and, um, and stay active. Um, so just make sure I'm staying active. There will be times I would play the real video games for like four hours straight and then I'm like, all right, I got to do something else. And that's when I would just go for a jog or walk my dog or do some push-ups, things like that. So it's definitely tough, but, you know, you just got to keep in your mind that you need to be doing something other than just laying around. Yeah, and Chet Davis from CBS 6. Can you put yourselves in, I mean, athletes of all ages and skill level are going through this together, but can you imagine being a teenager right now to not have summer sports, the spring athletes lost their season? Can you just imagine what that would be like if you were a teenager going through this? Oh, it would be tough. I mean, because when you're young, you're, you're always doing something. You're always playing with your friends. You're always at the park. You're always going to the movies. You're always going to the mall. You're always doing something to kind of occupy your time. When, when you're in that age group, it's pretty easy to get bored when you're at the house. So. I mean, I definitely understand their pain, and I can't imagine what they're going through. So, but that's why I try to say it's important to you know just just try to get outside, go in your backyard, and have a cookout or something with your family. Do things like that. Go for a walk. Walk your dog if you have a pet. You know, there's a lot of things to keep busy, but you know, it's definitely tough, and I can't imagine what they're going through. I mean, I'm going through a little situation right now, just going like everybody else, but you know, I'm just trying to stay positive and just knowing that um, if we all work together and soon. Any other questions? Dion, it's Chet again. You kind of mentioned how you're doing a lot of push-ups, a lot of running. Uh, what are some of the more creative things you've come up with as you've been uh, maybe stuck at home away from the facility to stay active and fit? Um, I'm in pretty good running shape, i tell you that. I mean, I don't know how strong I am right now just doing push-ups, but um, I'm just trying to do whatever I can because, you know, it's my job to make sure I'm ready to go whenever – things are lifted. So um, I have a responsibility, um, not only to myself, but to my fans and my family to make sure I'm ready to go. So I just do whatever I have to do. I run a lot, I do a lot of push-ups. Um, I got a weight vest. Um, I got some ladders and a few dumbbells. So, you know, I'm able to make some things happen, but, you know, just doing more than I usually do just because it's not as heavy as I, I might usually lift or things like that. So um, just doing whatever I can to make sure I'm, I'm always going to be ready whenever we get the call to go back to work. Dion, as always, thank you for partnering with Albany County. AT&T, Kristen Duff, thank you so much for what you're doing at AT&T and getting the message out there. And to Pal, to Tom Broccoli, and to uh, Lenny, who's recovering from surgery, uh, you know, thank you to Pal. And I just want to say this again. You have to post that to Instagram with the hashtag uh, Albany County, stay safe. Before midnight, there'll be 20 winners will be picked randomly this week by our partner, Omni Pal. 
and uh, you'll get a message that you want and you'll get a $25 gift card. So uh, the challenge is out there. You have a homework assignment, kids, get to it. Um, I do want to say one thing before I continue on. Uh, contact tracers has been a big topic. We're, Omni County is not hiring. We're using internal people. Uh, the stadium in New York is hiring contact uh, tracers. So uh, you have to go to that website and we put that up yesterday. But we had to get an extra 167 so we could get the green light to go forward. And I do want to give a shout out to Mayor Sheen. She gave up 77 people to help out with this. Uh, Steve McLaughlin gave up 50. Uh, we found an additional 225 on top of the 40 we already had from the health department uh, that are getting trained, the training yesterday. Hopefully everyone completed it. So we put up an additional 392 uh, so we can get to phase one and get that door open in and getting forward. So I'm hoping we'll get good news from the governor today or tomorrow uh, or from the control room meeting I have at 1400. So uh, I just wanted to remind everyone of that. And as always, uh, please, our, uh, our mobile testing sites are by appointment only. Um, you can call 518-465-4771 to uh, uh, get to testing, and you can go online to, to look at the uh, dates and where they're going to be at throughout the county. Uh, also, I mentioned UAlbany and Rite Aid, and, um, and for UAlbany essential employees, you have to call one 888 three six four three zero six five or go online and uh, they'll set it up and the same thing with Purdy one and Gilliland as always uh, and please remember our mental health hotline is there for you uh, seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. area code 518-265-6634-269-6634 our 24-hour sexual assault hotline number area code 518-447-7716 and also the 211 in the New York State hotline um, again, please, everyone, continue to do what you're doing. Our numbers are going down. I can't thank you enough. Any questions? Yesterday, Governor Cuomo said that in 30 upstate counties, court proceedings would continue for staff would be allowed back in the building on some level. We didn't really offer any clarity on what exactly that meant or which counties during the you know, Daryl, they, uh, we got to get the phase one to open up and then our court system should start opening up again uh, for speedy trials. I think the district attorney mentioned that yesterday in the interview, uh, and that's the problem that we're having. They have been shut down for almost 10 weeks. Uh, no one's come to work, uh, which means things can't get done in a timely manner. Uh, we do need them back. We need to open it up. It's going to change uh, the way, you know, how do you bring a jury back? Or, they, you know, as long as they have masks on, they can be next to each other. Uh, how many people are you going to let in the courtroom? I can tell you what I feel, how it should be done, but it's going to be up to OCA and the judges, uh, how they feel going forward uh, and what they want to do. Uh, the other thing we're dealing with OCA too now is that, you know, basically we're told we have to get 11 employees out of there because uh, they're making cuts and we have to bring in, they're bringing in their own, uh, they, OCA has their own police department. So uh, they want to execute that and bring it into family court. So you're going to see some of our deputies will no longer be in family court and you're going to see OCA cops and their, their personnel and not ours. Do you have any insight at all on whether or not minor reports can continue like the crews or the privacy without you know, I think they can. I think people, as long as it's televised, people want to see something. They don't. They're tired of the reruns. Uh, I think. I think the viewership will go up with people sitting at home watching these sports stuff goes on. So I encourage it to get back. You know, it's it's hard. Like I think Dion said it the best. You know, it's kind of weird playing in a big stadium that usually has sixty thousand or seventy thousand fans, and you're playing a game and you're not hearing the roar of the crowd. And I think part of the excitement for them is that they can't hear each other because it's so loud on the field for them. Uh, they'll miss that, but I think pe more people will be in tune to sit home to watch it and be happy watching it. It's 
it, it's crucial. It was very, very crucial. And I know Lenny and Tom from PAL and Kristen from AT&T, they, they, we discussed this and we went round and round because, you know, you need someone for the kids to look up to. And I always say, I, you know, I want kids to look up to their neighbors as their heroes and everything else. Dion's a kid with a unique story um, of where he came from and where he's at today. And it's a successful story. And that's when you want to share with kids uh, to show that there is hope at the end of the tunnel. You can change your life if you want to, uh, if you want to be positive and you want to work hard for something. And uh, I commend him that he comes back all the time and helps these kids out. It's, it's four hours, it's online, and then you have to take an exam at, at the end and get an 85 or better to get certified. And they actually sign up as a supervisor or a tracer. Um, and we, we let people know yesterday too, uh, just because Omni's putting, you know, we're putting up like over 352 people. Uh, they may be doing it in Columbia Green. They may be doing it in Saratoga, Warren, or Washington. There, there's no set, you know, you're gonna just get a list of people to call and you're gonna to have to call, you might be doing this connected. We're in this together. We're one New Yorkers. We're all in this in a partnership and we have to help each other out if a county's having a hard time getting tracers up. And this is a conjunction with the state and the Bloomberg Foundation. So as they continue to get more people online, this is if we get a spike. And Dr. Whalen said it best yesterday, we won't know for like 14 days, if I stand correct, if I'm not, please correct me, uh, 14 days before you see a spike, or I think he said even longer if someone passes away. Any other questions? Uh, both. We're in a part of our matrix of our plan reopening, we want the plan to come to us as well as state so we can help them out. If they're missing something, um, you know, I, I just, you know, people are reaching out, how do I open up a salon? How do I do this? We'll help you. So I got to tell you, some hairdressers already, barbershops gave us great plans on how to reopen and how they're going to handle it. It's all about sharing. Uh, we don't want you to reinvent a wheel. We don't want you to stress out. And that's why with our matrix, when we put it together, unlike any uh, place else in the state of New York, we help small businesses with loans because I think Tom Nardachi said it correctly when he was here talking about small businesses. They don't have the tentacles into the big banks. They don't have the relationships with the bank managers uh, or their accounts aren't so big where they pay attention to them when they walk in the door and they should treat everyone the same. But when they come in there to sit there and say, hey, this is how you fill out the application. This is how you're going to get through it or they don't have accountants or attorneys that can navigate the water for them. So we're going to try to help them do all that. So they're on the same playing field because our backbone of our communities are small businesses, our bars, our restaurants, our little business, our record stores, uh, little uh, petite stores you see along Central Avenue or on Clinton Avenue. They're the ones that get us at our, our salons. Um, and so how can I go to Bantech going forward if they need businesses and not necessarily how much somebody I'm hoping to get an answer at 1400 from the control room. I brought that up yesterday. It's a question I'm getting on Facebook. It's a question people are sending to my office. Um, look, we, we don't have the staff. I mean, we have weights and measures that have to go out. We have the health department that has to go out to certain restaurants. We don't have the personnel to go out into the community and to police everything. And we're going to rely on the customers. We're going to rely on the employees to basically get back to us and say, hey, they're not following the rules here. Or I, you know, someone comes to your establishment and says, hey, and we get the complaints now. Oh, there are 60 people. I felt uncomfortable. It was overcrowded. So we're going to rely on that. But when it comes down to enforcement, is it going to be the state? Is it going to be the state police? Is it going to be the local uh, authorities that are going to handle this and what authority under the law I know the governor put all the executive stuff out um, I'm not an attorney I'm not you know the DA and these are great questions for them to sit there and say is this enforceable and how are you going to enforce it going forward This is clearly very early to ask this question, but it's something worth thinking about. What is your understanding of the requirements for phase two of reopening, whether it be the two week period of flat numbers? What, what actually needs to happen? Do we need to approve further or is where we are now good enough to open phase two in two weeks? 
it's it, where we're at now it will be judged two weeks from now. And I, I think the doctor said it best and myself that if we don't um, continue to practice social distancing uh, and we're going to continue aggressively test, uh, if people come out and they just don't follow the protocols or they think it's a gone, uh, it's still there people. We're just doing a good job now of really staying social isolated. Uh, if that changes two weeks from now, we won't hit phase two. We can take a setback. And that's why I keep saying everyone, please don't think.